Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and um, it has been a while, hasn't it? But yes, I'm going to continue here with the Ottoman game. We did end uh, really on the outset of war with the Russian Empire. Now, the Russians, as I recall, were at war with Persia, and uh, yeah, they were at war with Sweden as well, actually. Okay. I don't know why it starts us over the US. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here, then. In the war against Russia, war score decreased by minus one, it now stands at minus three. Okay. But we're starting to get somewhere, that's the thing. Starting to get somewhere. The war has started... I think it has started early, to be honest. I suppose we could call this Crimean War then, just an earlier one. We have a good stock of dyes. Manufactured goods we are increasing as well. And the general satisfaction of the populace is increasing as well, which is quite good. Chemical production, um, yeah, we're selling more of that, really. We're doing fairly well here. I might look towards reducing the taxation, but what we'll do as we really increase our merchant, well, our mercantile fleet, really build up the actual industrial economy as we'll reduce the taxation on the actual uh, citizen, citizenry. So that'd be the best way to go about doing that, really. Okay, so we do have our leaders over here. Looks like you're leading a... Division, perhaps? So these are guards. Yes, yeah, guard regiment. These are just... Run-of-the-mill infantry, regular infantry, and we have regular infantry over here as well. We do have the cannon that is on its way to Constantinople as well. It's going to be quite good. Okay, so if we take a look at the actual general shape of things here on the diplomacy view. If I recall which one it is. There we go, foreign ministry. What I want to do here is take a look at the Russians. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Yes, yeah, so the Russians are, of course, at war with the Ottoman Empire, the French, the British Empire, Sweden, and Persia. They do have a defensive treaty with Austria. And they do promise local support to Austria as well. Oh no, Austria to Russia. Okay. It's going to be an interesting one, really. We're going to have to see what we can do. The good news is the Persians do share the burden over here in the Caucasus. Which is quite an advantage. We are looking to really uh, dig ourselves in and over here. 75 days of the fort expansion over there. I mean, cars really is the big one in terms of fortifications, I believe. Yeah, size 2 fort there. We do have a size 1 pre industrial fort. And well, as this one is an industrial fort over here. Tactician of Ilan. Yeah, he's quite good. He's quite good. So, if we take a look at the actual, let's see. I would like to see the city, please. There we go. Yeah, we do have the industrial fort there. I wish I knew how effective that actually was in terms of comparison to the pre-industrial. Uh, but I'm sure we'll find out shortly, really. So, if we take a look at the actual uh, state's coffers, we do have private capital looking quite nice. Money could be better. We are still fighting the war down here in Yemen. It's been a bit of a pain in the arse though, really. 
Uh, but I think that's down to my underestimation of the Yemi's tribes. Or the Yamani tribes. I don't know if they're... I mean, it says neutral there, but I don't know if they're with us or against us, to be honest. Well, these forces are stood down here to recover. Place them in passive, so they're more likely to receive replacements. There we go. The fleet is abound. I don't know where the Russian Black Sea fleet is at the moment in time. So we do have to bear that one in mind. They are returned to Constantinople as well. Uh, not a bad idea, really. All things considered. So we are looking to upgrade this to an industrial fort at Constanza. Depending on how long it lasts, we might be able to get there. 60 days there. 270 days there. Okay. What we are going to do then is allow time to pass us by. We do have artillery on its way to Constantinople. Ideally, that will help us. I can't see it not doing so, really. Hmm. I'd love to see what the British can do for us and the French can do for us. I mean, ideally some expeditionary forces in the Empire would be quite nice. I mean, the British are really looking to support us. Really as something of a buffer against the Russians, against Russian, in, well, uh, Russian influence in the region, really. Much in the same way that the British Empire did try to establish Persia as a buffer, and then obviously Afghanistan as a, bush, uh, as a buffer, really, against Russian expansionism. Ideally, we'll uh, remain a bulwark. I think we're in a better position, really. I mean, it depends. The Russians are somewhat occupied in Persia and uh, Sweden, as they have been for some time. I mean, Sweden really has received a lot of the Russian attention, so that's quite good news. The good news is it's very close to the British, it's very close to the French. So ideally, that will see the fighting take place predominantly in Sweden. The bleeding in Sweden. <laughs> Probably, probably about as much as we can ask for there, really. Oh well. I know it's going to be a long war. If we can have the Empire's economy continue to thrive even throughout the war, then we should be in a good position. I mean, the Russians are going to find it a little bit more difficult, as they're going to find trading with other nations harder. I mean, they will still be able to trade, of course, with their European partners in the form of the Austrian uh, Empire and, of course, of Prussia. But they'll find maritime trade pretty difficult. If I can try to buy the time to allow Constanza and other, and other cities like it to build up their fortifications, we might send a, a decent chance, at least. And the Prussians are at war with uh, Holland as well, actually. So the Netherlands isn't going to be doing too well there. Yeah, China's still going through a state of turmoil here. There we go. I 
I'd love to know how the breakdown of a war score actually goes here. I wonder what's costing us our war score. So far, they've not encroached upon any of our territory as of yet. Uh, yeah, the Russians really, yeah. I mean, this should be easy for the British and the French to really look towards dealing with. Hmm. And once we deal with uh, Yemen, then at least we'll have additional forces freed up. And the Persians are doing fairly well. The Russians have a lot of supply there. I'd love to take that away from them. Oops. Right, the artillery is on its way. Um, see, the issues with the artillery, I don't know how much use it actually is. I don't think it's really much use within an actual siege scenario, is it? When we are besieging, then sure, but... I don't think it's particularly useful uh, <laughs> from within a fortress. But anyhow, we'll take a look over here then, shall we? Okay, so that would explain the war score decrease there. <sighs> Fuck. Okay, so we're now at war with the Austrian Empire as well. I mean, the good news is that I don't know if the French are involved in the war now. With Austria, I, I don't know here. Yeah. We're going to find this one really, um... I mean, that that's completely changed things there. That's bloody... <laughs> yeah, that, that's changed a lot. I, I don't know how we're going to manage that. We have massive technology of colonial ministries. Very nice, very nice. Uh, fudge. And the good news is at least I can blockade the Austrians, but... Uh, it looks like our commerce fleet over here is finished at the very least. I'll wait for the other one to be finished. So we do have some wooden frigates over here, there. Combine the fleets. Right, so we have the main fleets here. I think what we'll do then is we'll send the fleet to, uh, out there to Albania. Are they all part? Right, okay. Send it to Albania. And at least with the fleets, I can bombard the coastlines, but I mean, yeah, uh, that really is going to change a lot there. I think we are going to have to use the uh, Imperial Army against the Austrians. I don't know how we're going to manage that. We'll wait for the artillery to arrive and then uh, we'll have to choose where to make a stand. It might be that we make a stand there in Bulgaria. And Sophia in the mountains. We're just going to have to make use of the mountains here. There's really nothing else I can do about that. <laughs> That's just not what I wanted right now. They're only a war with me. I doubt they'll really accept very much. I think what we have to do here then is 
frankly fight a little while, try to win some battles. Hmm. <sighs> That's really made things hard for me. Can I say what's in the port, please? <laughs> oh, are these not our forces? Okay, so it looks like French forces are here, apparently. I don't know. We're just going to have to manage this really as best as we can. There's no real two ways about it. It is what it is. Things I don't want to go fighting out here due to the fact that it's, it's alpine mountains, you know what I mean? There, there's no easy thing about that. Is there anything I can do to get the British involved or the... I mean, the French... If I could get the French involved against the Austrians, then uh, that would be great. But I don't think that's going to happen, is it? I should have looked for the <laughs> offer defensive treaty. Oh dear. Okay. We're just going to have to see what we can manage here, really. The Austrians are going to make things exceedingly hard. I mean, Bosnia is currently under siege, at least, so at least it hasn't fallen out right. Though I imagine they'll probably take it if they do assault it. So, Bosnia will buy some time. Uh, Herzegovina will obviously buy some time as there as well. Also, the city of Sarajevo. I'm just gonna have to hope for the best, really, just because there's not much I can do for Bosnia. I, I, I can't do much for that region. I can't really do much. To stop the Austrians, and I'm hoping, and the the thing is as well, it opens up, it opens up the ability for the Russian armies to move down into Bosnia as well. I mean, we do have Bulgaria, parts of Bulgaria, fortified uh, to the north as well, further fortifications. I mean, Constantinople itself is a very large fort. I think we began the process of industrializing the fortress. I'm not sure I'd have to take a look at that. The thing is, though, Anatolia proper is okay. It should be relatively safe. But yeah, I mean, Greece and the Balkans, they're, they're pretty much on the chopping block at the moment. Hmm. The thing is, I don't know what the Rush sorry, I don't know what the Austrian reason for the declaration of war is. I mean, I don't know what their Cassis Belli is. Are they supporting the Russians? Are they part of the alliance? Is it a Austro-Russian alliance? A Russo-Austrian alliance? Yeah. Or um, is this for their own gain, really? It might be that we potentially have to sacrifice Bosnia if that's the claimed region. But the thing is, we'll have to. We're just going to have to fight. We'll have to really go through it. Go through the motions, ideally find them in the mountains. I mean, ideally at Sofia. We'll see.
So not only do we have the Austrians and the Russians to deal with on top of Yemen, we also now have some <laughs> some bloody rebels. At least the Taiping Rebellion is doing something there. It'd be interesting to see what would happen if the Taiping Rebellion actually won. I don't think it can though. But who knows? Strange things do happen in this game. Right, so they're definitely treated as separate wars then. Acting on free will, Bavaria supports in Austria against the Ottoman Empire and has now declared war. Brilliant. That's exactly what I like to see. Even more enemies. God sakes. Okay, well, we've dealt with the rebels as far as I can tell. So at least that's what enemy down there. I mean, Mesopotamia is not doing too badly. The Russians don't really have that much in the Caucasus, so I don't know if they have troops over that way. Uh, Turkish fort, okay. Well, that's good very, at the very least. We need to just build up enough supply to really move on beyond here. That's the difficult thing. This is where naval forces really do come into their own. Right, so we do see a Russian force moving down here. I don't know, we might be able to gain some war score by defeating Russian armies. It looks like there's a core over there. Uh, that's another core as well. Jesus, that takes a lot longer than I would have imagined. Hmm. The army is a little bit over here. It might be best to leave behind some cavalry. It brings it down to 14%. 3% there. I can accept 3%. We're going to march towards Sophia. I could try to force march to reduce the time taken, but I don't think it's going to be worth it. We want our troops to be in a fine state, really. Right, so we're looking at uh, 240 days there. 30 days remaining, so two turns for Varna. To receive the upgrade there. Yes, yeah, so Constantinople is undergoing upgrades there to the actual fortress, but that's going to take about 240 days, so nothing too soon. Uh, a few turns more until we have the fort extension of the cars. Okay. How goes the war in the north? So the Prussians are besieging Amsterdam, just besieging Holland in general, really. Yeah, the Russians are really just, they're running a mock, aren't they, really? I mean, Stockholm still holds out, but yeah, some cities have fallen to the Russians. Uh, Gothenburg, Sala, Linkhoping, I don't know how you pronounce that one. Yeah, quite a few cities have fallen there. 
Norway is more or less under uh, Russian occupation. Yeah. Not much in the way of Sweden really holds out there. Who knows? Who knows? The war may yet uh, favor us. Who, who, would, who can see how this crazy mess is going to go? But yeah, Bosnia is starting to obviously crack. Right. The fleet can take on supplies there. Then we'll, we'll look to bombard. Potentially look to cause some damage there to the Austrians if we can. There's not really much else I can do. Okay. We do have a Turkish force over here then. So at least that is something. The good news is at least with some supplies in there they can hold out a little bit longer. The thing is we don't have any walls over here really. So if they come under a determined assault, they are going to fall. We'll move forward. The Imperial Army can march out. The thing is, I don't know how strong these Russians army, uh, Russian armies are either. They seem to be made up of about a single army corps. But that could be really uh, all, manner, all manner of numbers of troops, really. Hmm... I suppose the thing that we have got going for us at the moment. I mean, the Russians don't really have... I mean, I don't know where the Black Sea Fleet is. Uh, it might have been moved out in the in the past. Not entirely sure there. The Austrians, they will have a fleet. I'm not entirely sure how strong their fleet is, but I don't think it's going to be terribly strong. I don't know. I've not seen the Austrian armies yet, actually. But we are seeing the Russians, as I talked about. I suppose that's the issue really, is dealing with the Russians. But at least if we can deal with the Russians, at least I can gain some war score back and then we might be able to end the war. I don't know, I don't need anything for the Russians. I mean, if I could get anything from them, it would be some uh, monetary concessions, really. That would be quite nice. Like, actual... Even a little bit, even just like a tiny bit would be nice. But overall, a status quo situation would be fine by us, you know? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be in this war. But we'll see what we can manage. Right, so they are assaulting. Ooh, they almost succeeded there. There's not much in the way of troops holding them back. Okay, that battle's going significantly better now. I mean, this is it. We do have the fortresses over there. But there's a lot of Russians in the Balkans here already. They're not fucking around. They're moving very, very quickly there. We see some bloody Austrians moving up there to the north, then. In the Baltic. Why the hell are the Austrians up there? I wonder if the, um... I wonder if the Austrians are in some sort of full-fledged alliance with the Russian Empire. And I could fully understand the reasons for the Austrians to join with the Russians, especially against the Ottoman Empire. 
Hmm. <sighs> I'm just hoping that the French might declare war to he does really, but I doubt that's gonna happen. Okay. Yeah, France has refused our offer. That's not surprising. I'm just going to amass a number of funds then, really. We'll see what we'll need. So if we take a look at the situation then. So we see... Yeah, here comes the Austrians as well. Good God. Okay, so there's a Russian cavalry force over here, there. I could defeat that force. Yeah. <laughs> and these are actual Austrian armies. These are just cores. I could split the force, and it's probably a good idea to split the force. You're active. You're active as well. Okay, you can move out. Okay. Um, that should go to you. You're going to hold up here. I don't know, I suppose the thing is it's like we might as well just stay on the defensive, really. Right. So you're going to go over here, as ordered. Deal with the Russians. I don't know where they might go. Okay, the artillery has arrived. It will allow the artillery to recover cohesion, etc. Uh, then at least I might be able to get the artillery to the front there. Right. So we need to recover that cohesion. It's recovering two per day. It'll recover quickly enough. Okay. So we have finished our industrial upgrade over there, which is fantastic news. I don't know what that is, so that's good time in there. Bloody Spanish and their rail lines. Okay, so the Russians are moving in, uh, moving in over here. I mean, that's a single division or something of that nature. I could probably tackle that. It might, it, yeah, it might be worthwhile tackling that while it's in our own territory here, really. Okay. We'll see. It might be worthwhile trying to raise new troops. So a infantry division there. I mean, we do have the actual militia corps. It might be worthwhile raising a militia corps. It's going to take 70 days to raise. Fortress artillery takes us about 40 days. I mean, fortress artillery might be worthwhile. I can't raise it over here, though, if that's the issue. I think I might go about raising a... Militia Corps. We're just gonna have to see what we can do here, really. I don't have a huge deal of forces really available to us. Uh, so we're gonna have to hope for the best. 
I think if we can deal with the smaller Russian forces while they are separated, that's probably the best thing to do, really. They're very much a raiding party, I suppose you could say. I suppose, if anything, we get an idea of how powerful the Russian, uh, <laughs> book. Oh, dear. But, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> Who's more powerful? Uh, the Russian or the Austrian army here? I like how I went from, like, okay, yeah, things are alright. There's no Russian activity. Nah, they're just moving through Austria to get to us. Yeah, that's foregone conclusion there. Okay, the numbers are pretty even here. Ah, uh, there we go. That's looking significantly better. Right, so we're dealing with the Russians over there. So at least we've won two little victories here to begin with. That's very nice for the Imperial Army. The Sultan will be happy. We'll start to lose some resistance in Sweden at least. Not much. I mean, the Russians, <laughs> they can definitely, definitely beat the Swedish, Swedish forces up there. I'd love to know what the British and the French are doing. Would love to know. So I don't see very much. Right, so we surrendered in Bosnia, that one's not surprising. That's a fair amount of strength there. So is that. 
So is that... That's mostly cavalry. Wow. Okay. <sighs> we need to pull back. I mean, where do, we, where do we make our stand here, really? We have mountains, we have hills. At least over here, I could use the navy. I mean, obviously, the navy's over here right now. I think what we'll do, then, is we bring the navy into the Aegean. At least I can actually use its bombardment. I mean, that would be quite nice. I mean, it would work. It would make fighting on the coast actually worthwhile. The thing is, if I lose Thessalonica, that is going to be quite the blow there. The issue is it's clear. It, it's not going to last very long. But we do have a garrison. It might be worth making a stand in Thessalonica. But it's just it's just not an advantageous set of terrain there, really, is it? I think what we'll do, then, is we march this out. But then again, it's going to... I think what we'll do then is we'll march to Thessalonica anyway, as I don't really have much of a way of choice. And there we go. Converge on Thessalonica. But like when they arrive in Thessalonica, it's basically, uh, join the garrison, I suppose. I might leave these guys out just as a protection. As one protection, really. Hey, at least Constanza might actually finish upgrading. <laughs> oh, God. They attacked the garrison over here, which wasn't the wisest idea. Uh, at least get an idea of how effective our troops are. Hmm. Okay. Oh, that's really good, man. So, Varna has just upgraded, which is really nice. Right, so we have just built a fort there in Varna. That's really nice. Uh, Baghdad now has a fort, which is brilliant. So, we do have some cavalry there. Okay. I think what I might do, then, is actually send the cavalry and that infantry out. The thing is, though, Baghdad is quite an important city, so I do not want to leave it without a garrison. That's fairly formidable. Uh, we'll have to see what we can do here. I mean, that must be... I don't know if that's the French or the British there. I think it might be French and British, perhaps, but I, I just don't know. I just don't know where their forces are. But at least if that is a French or British naval force, at least, then that is going to keep the Sea of Amara fairly safe. Yes, yeah, so we do see British uh, warships over here, then, so that's good news. So that is you have the fleet there. At least that's going to deal with the rations. I'm going to bring the actual Ottoman fleet into the Aegean Sea, and then at least I can use it to bombard and really give us something of a chance. I suppose that's going to be the only way we could try and equalize force, I suppose. We do have a good deal of artillery on this way. It does have low cohesion. I may not like it, but I may have to make a stand in Thessalonica. The reason being it's a very important city to the Empire. Was it under the... I think it was under the Roman Empire, at least under the Eastern Roman Empire, uh, that Thessalonica held status as the second capital? It might have been under the Ottoman Empire. We'll do what we can do. 
I mean, do I regret building <laughs> fortifications? Not really, because they'll come in handy. Would have been nice if I had a larger army, but... But again, this is it. We, we can't really effectively beat the Austrians and the Russians. Definitely not at the same time. Okay. I assume we were bombarding the Austrians as we left there. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Russian controls looking pretty pretty complete over there. The bleeding in Sweden continues. The chin aren't looking too good. <laughs> oh god. Oh well, they're in a better situation than I am. Maybe. Though is there a worse foe than one who looks like your brother? It'd be interesting to see what the effectiveness of the fleet will be, really. They do have a fair amount of guns anyway. So let's see. I mean, we do have two uh, wooden battleship flotilla fleet. Uh, sorry, uh, wooden battleship flotillas. So at least we do have a fair amount of force there. I don't know, we just have to keep them. They don't particularly have to have an amazing amount of cohesion, really. Okay, so there's a large Austrian army over there. It looks like you're still on the way. What? Is the artillery still over here? Oh, it is, okay. Tell you what, sometimes it's hard to actually tell where you are. I don't know why they do not want to combine. Fudge sakes.
Right, you're an Adrianople. You're also an Adrianople, okay. Right, that makes sense. Sometimes it's hard to tell where you are. Right, we'll have the force combined. I think we'll wait um, for the actual total force to combine. Okay, so we actually have some forces over there from the Raj. That's interesting. But at least there are some British forces on the ground. That's nice. Yeah, okay, so only Stockholm holds out at the moment in time. It looks like it's no longer under siege. Okay, Oslo. Yeah, but it's not looking good for the Swedes. Really, it's not. Wow, 10 gems. Oh, fantastic. So we do have a larger port over here at Cars now. The annoying thing is they're taking control over here. He's still not active as of yet. But I mean, Falls is a size 3 industrial fort, so let's hope for the best there. Finish building a consulate in Tripitania. Finish the fort extension over there. Okay. I've also got the merchant in here, haven't I? Okay. Uh, where should we send them? It'd be nice to try and trade out this way, really. Possibly trade out here. I mean, we need access to more nations, really. But we'll see how we get on down there. It could be interesting to trade with British India. Okay. I don't think we have any other naval assets, really. Nope, no rail lines as of yet. One day we may have them. <laughs> uh, I suppose the thing is, if they do move on Thessalonica, at least we can bombard them. There's an okay garrison there at Thessalonica. It is better than the other parts of Greece, really. At least of uh, Ottoman Greece. So Thessalia... Epirus. But yeah, we'll see how the bombardment really affects things. But at least if we do march onto Thessalonica, uh, we do benefit from actually, well, the terrain being planes. The issue is there's going to be more forces on the way. So we're not just going to be dealing with that one army. There will be more. I don't know, then again, I suppose in some ways if the British landed forces at least at least they might do it more often.
Okay, at least we might have a new training partner in the form of Burma. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hmm. The Thessalonica garrison is not doing exactly too great there. Yeah. I deal with hunt. Hmm. Looks like we might be retaking Thessalonica of this raid. Yep. Geyser. They're attacking our merchant man. That's not good. <laughs> ah, shit. That's not exactly great. I was kind of hoping that Thessalonica would have held out a little bit longer. At least we do have the Imperial Army re reassembled. From what I saw, there did look to be a larger threat looming towards the heart of the Empire. Ah, fudge. Damn the goddamn Austrians. So what can we see there? So the Russians are moving there. My best bet might be to actually solve this force in Thessalonica. So what do we have here? 794 cannon apparently. Okay, bombardment will only occur in support of your, your own units. But that's handy enough. At least I can move the navy, move the uh, forces up and down. Mm. We do have a fair garrison at Adrianople, actually. Hold at all costs. Oh, Burgess has fallen, apparently. They're besieging the city over here. As I've unlinked in tonight. It's not exactly a great situation right now. Amazingly, still not active. I suppose, of all things, though, it, it's not. It's never as bad as it really seems, really. They can't do that much, besides break of the Empire. Um. <laughs> I don't know, we, we might be able to recover one day.
Okay, here we go. Would have been nice had our uh, army leader been well active. I suppose we can't have everything, can we? Okay, so we do have a support in bombardment, and it looks like there's a lot more. Oh, more Russians and Austrians. That bombardment, it do, yeah, it does actually seem to be fairly effective, which is quite nice. Yes, reducing their combat power quite nicely. Keep it up. Ooh. Okay, looking good, looking good. That's not looking good. And that kicks us out. Oh, there we go, we finally have a Russian. British naval engagement. Hmm. Okay. Well, I suppose cars of all the fortresses that we do have, barring Constantinople, is probably the one that could hold out. Well, hold out possibly best. Though, uh. Well, she's not a coastal fortress, is she? So she's never gonna hold out that long. There is a limit. I'd love to know when we Swedes are going to give out. Oh, okay. Baden has declared war on us as well. That's brilliant. Oh, I can actually get them into... Okay, yeah. Go into the actual fortress of cars. Just remain there. Okay. At least Great Britain now has a cast of spell eye against the Austrians, so they might do something. Hmm. Okay. Good news is we are active here. I think what we're going for then is a sustained attack, I guess. Try and make, uh, make use of our artillery. We've got to find them back somehow. But the artillery has been quite nice. Well, the support in naval artillery. Not tonight. Not getting you moving. Oh, you are. I, I don't fucking know what it's doing. It's not right as of yet. It's going to take it a long way to get down there. There it is. Yeah, ideally it survives, but it would be nice to have trade with China. Just to have access to those, like, markets would be really, really nice. Twelve days. That'd be nice to have another call. What's the garrison of Constantinople line? Actually, not that great. Never mind, that call will be welcome over there. I mean, Adrianople, really. I suppose it does make sense. Like, you wouldn't have a large uh, garrison in Constantinople due to the fact that you have Adrianople. If Adrianople falls, then yeah, haha. <laughs> things aren't looking great. So we'll have this as the last turn.
It's not looking good, is it? <laughs> it's it's just not looking good. Uh, I mean, ideally we have a good bombardment again. It does do a solid job, though. That's quite nice. And it does make sense. Okay, looking excellent so far. Not as good. Still up there. Much better. Hmm. Well, that wasn't bad then, so we will have won a few victories here. It's just the thing is, I, I just can't stop that many armies. I think what we have to do then is, uh, I don't know, it's hard. I mean, bombardment really is only in support of our forces, but at least they will support the garrisons of the forts, so that's quite handy. Bum, bum, bum. Alright then, let's see what we have here. Hmm. That was the door of the Constantinople that I was building. Thing is, if they move into Anatolia, that's, that's gonna be a pain in the ass. I'm going to have to turn off the extra <laughs> Kessler spell, I think. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. We did very well there. Okay, so yeah, okay. Um, well, that's really nice to know then. So it does muster a, very, a pretty decent garrison, actually. So we do have 64,800 men there. Excellent. Still bombarded over here. Still active, which is good news. Yeah, so... At least we are able to actually win some battles here. Yeah, new seniority. New rank. Very nice. I don't know what promoting does, to be honest. He might be able to command more troops, but yeah, they deserve that. Uh, okay, I mean, it's looking pretty decent. I mean, we do have a decent amount of cannon. We're supported by naval bombardment, which is nice. We're fighting on the planes. If we fight against smaller numbers, we can actually do fairly well. We do have the militia corps now. So I'll have that take up uh, position over there. Get us into the city there, really. Hmm. Well, yeah, things are definitely spicy, though. We'll see what we can do. I mean, we are dealing... Uh, we're not doing too bad, really. So far, anyway. So 
So we have 3,200 Austrian prisoners. We have 17,200 Russian prisoners, actually. That's not bad at all, you know. That's really not bad. I do not know what sudden death means. <laughs> We're not bad in terms of military rank 9. Economic, yeah, could be up there. But commerce is not bad at all, really. Technology, yeah. Hmm. We still count as one of the great powers, really. To some degree. To some degree. So they are against me. Bloody Brits. <laughs> yes, you're on your way. That's brilliant. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to when we can actually have trade out this way. We did gain two national morale from that victory. That was nice. What is our national morale? I don't know how to check. Oh, there we go. National morale. Hmm. Russians still have a fair amount of it. Austrians are doing pretty well. Ah, dear. But there we go. Thank you for watching there, ladies and gentlemen. I know it has been a while, but I'll try to do these every now and then. I mean, at least we can get through the game here. I just wish it didn't take so long to actually load. That's the only thing. Uh, but thank you for watching. If you guys do enjoy this, uh, please do consider becoming a patron. It really is up to you patrons to... <laughs> if it wasn't for you guys, I probably wouldn't be doing this series, really. So, yeah. It is the patron's choice if I do this. A lot of you are fine people and have always wanted a Pride of the Nations campaign. Uh, so I'll do this as long as you guys want it. So, thank you very much for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, please do subscribe down below. And follow me on Twitch at XDRG as well. Until next time, thank you for watching. And goodbye from... Uh, <laughs> ooh, a beleaguered Ultimate Empire. Good night. Have a beautiful evening. See you guys in the future.